So I think we can all agree that we love the Z9. That's a really fantastic camera. But if you really had to pick one thing that you weren't so keen on, it'd probably be the size and the weight, right? You'd probably want to bring that down. Well, that's where the new Nikon Z8 camera comes in. Now, yesterday we went to the Nikon Z8 launch event, which was really, really cool. And actually, I've got to be honest with you, before we even get into it, that camera has blown me away. We had a chance to actually test out the camera as well, do some photo, do some video. This is absolutely just a monster hybrid camera, but in a much smaller and lighter body. This is unbelievably impressive stuff. We'll be doing a full review of this camera next week when we get our hands on it again, but we've had enough time with it to give some first impressions, to give a nice little first look. And let's talk about this, because this feels like a true successor to the DA50. And this feels like the absolute perfect camera if you thought the Z9 was just a little bit too big and a little bit too heavy. So the Z8 is a little bit bigger than a Z6 or a Z7, but it's about 30% smaller than a Z9. And it's only 910 grams, so it's quite a bit lighter than the 1,340 grams you find with the Z9. And this is absolutely designed for incredible photo and video performance. There really just isn't a compromise here between the two, and that makes this one of the most comprehensive hybrid systems out there right now. And it honestly feels so good to use. Now, spec-wise, it's very similar to the Z9. It has the same sensor, a 45 megapixel stacked CMOS sensor, so that gives you unbelievably beautiful images. There's a lot of resolution there if you want to crop as well, but everything just looks extremely good. It handles higher ISO values with absolutely no issues at all. The colors are fantastic. It really is a joy to see your images with this camera. It's also got the intelligent autofocus system, which is built on a deep learning system, so the camera is able to detect all kinds of different subjects. Now, we were mostly shooting things like portraits, a little bit of street architecture, and I was just letting the camera do all of the work when it came to focusing, and it feels like an incredibly strong system. Not really a surprise, the Z9 has a fantastic autofocus system, but I had no missed shots here, no issues when I came to check them on my computer. It's exactly what you would want from an autofocus system like this. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this handles with things like wildlife and fast moving subjects. And since this is based on the Z9, it should be pretty special. Now, speaking of fast moving subjects, the speed that the Z8 can shoot at is absolutely Absolutely ridiculous. You can shoot 20 frames a second in RAW at that lovely high resolution with a thousand plus buffer. And realistically, it doesn't actually seem to hit any kind of buffer. And if you want to shoot JPEG, you can shoot 120 frames a second, which is absolutely ridiculous. Now, part of that speed is down to the fact that, like the Z9, the Z8 has no mechanical shutter, which I know might seem a little bit jarring at first, but honestly, the electronic shutter is so good and things like rolling shutter have been dealt with so well that it's actually a massive positive. It means you have less moving parts to think about, which means that things like shutter count basically just irrelevant. There's no wear and tear from that. And you also get some incredible features. And you can also have shutter speeds from things like 900 seconds all the way to 1 32,000th of a second, giving you just a huge amount of versatility and the way you want to shoot. But like I say, this is absolutely a hybrid system through and through. And while this shines with photo and speed, it absolutely excels at video as well. There's no compromise here. These video specs are frankly outrageous. So the Z8 can shoot 8K up to 60 frames a second. You can shoot ProRes RAW. You can film at 12-bit 422 or 10-bit 422. You can shoot 4K up to 120 frames a second. So you really have a huge amount of control over your footage from file size to how much control you have later for things like color grading. There's a lot that you can do with this. There's also no crop when you're shooting with these different modes, which I'm sure will be welcome news to all videographers. Something else which occurred to me with this kind of spec is things like recording times and overheating problems. But that seems to be completely sorted because even in 8K, this camera will shoot up to 90 minutes. So if you did want to shoot something longer format, if you're shooting an event or something where you just need to leave the camera rolling, even in 8K, you can get a solid hour and a half. And realistically, I think you're gonna be much more storage challenged than time challenge when it comes to shooting like that. And of course, if you wanna shoot in something like 4K, you can shoot for hours. Now, all of this is in a much smaller and a much lighter body than the Z9. 
and it's the same kind of professional level build quality that you would see on something like the DA50. So that means extreme weather sealing, a shield for the sensor, just like on the Z9, and a host of different connections. Now you're looking at dual card slots here, no surprise there. You've got one CF Express or XQD for your faster shooting and one SD card slot as well. So you have a nice backup and you can still use all of your old SD cards. Another nice little touch are the dual USB terminals. So you can simultaneously transfer data while also charging the camera. You also have the ability to use Ethernet over USB-C, which is a first for Nikon, and that is going to be great for news journalists. There's no other way to put it. This is an extremely exciting camera. It's a fantastic hybrid option. There doesn't seem to be any compromise between photo and video. It just excels at both. I absolutely cannot wait to test it out in the real world. The launch event was fantastic. and We got actually quite a bit of time to check out this camera in different kind of situations, which is great. Enough certainly for me to get some first impressions and oh, they're good. They're good first impressions. I am oh, I'm excited, but I cannot wait to get out in the real world with it. At the moment, I have no negatives at all. Just nothing. It feels great in the hands and everything just looks fantastic. The usability of it is great. And I think really this camera will suit most people over the Z9. I think this is the one. Oh, it's just... It's just really, really exciting. And yes, there are still reasons to get the Z9 over the Z8, and we can talk about those in a future video. Maybe we'll do a comparison between the two. But for now, I think the Z8 is one of the best cameras out there, one of the best options as a hybrid system. And we'll have a full review of the camera in detail next week. In the meantime, you can check out the camera for yourself by following the link down in the description where you've got all the spec, all the info, Everything you could want to know, it's all down there. Follow that link. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. But until then, as always, oh, oh, thanks for watching.